Five, silence breaking tactics police use on today's modern day leper with Ahmad Blakemore. Hello and how are you? And welcome back to another edition of Modern Day Leper with Ahmad Blakemore. Five silence breaking tactics that police use. So you've been charged with a crime. They've arrested you. They take you downtown. And now you're sitting in the interrogation room. What next? They read you your rights. They tell you, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. They say you have the right to an attorney, and if you can't afford one, one will be appointed to you without charge. And then what happens? After that, these are the tactics that police use, okay? Number one, you have to understand that this entire situation is psychology and emotion. And you have to understand this going in, that this is a psychological mind war that they're going to wage against you. Psychology and emotion. So what is psychology? Psychology is the scientific study of the mind and behavior based on thought. So this is what they're going to use against you initially. They call you in and the first thing they use against you is isolation. Isolation is number one. They call you in, they put you in the room and you're waiting and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're wondering why you're waiting, because this is a psychological battle. They're watching you through the glass, and while they're watching you, they're developing a psychological profile on you. They're looking at you to see the second part of the psychological emotional battle is the emotion part of it. Emotion, a natural instinctive state of mind, a natural instinctive state of mind deriving from one's circumstances, mood, or relationship with other people. There is an instinctive mindset when we interact with someone whether we've been nice to them or mean to them or have wronged them some kind of way, we have an instinctive mood based on how we interact with other people. And they're using this emotion through psychology, working them together to see if they can develop a mindset based on your behavior based on what they're going to start telling you. Isolation. The first thing they use against you is isolation. Isolation, the state of feeling alone without friends or help. And that's what they want you to feel. They want you to feel helpless while they sit and watch you and determine your innocence or guilt based on how you're reacting. They will come into the room and then they will start number two, building rapport. It's very important for the police officer to build rapport with the person that they're interrogating to make him feel comfortable so that they can get him to start talking. But what is the key here? To remain silent. They are trying to get you to start talking. They tell you you have the right to remain silent. 
and then they do everything to break that silence. Number two, building rapport. To build rapport means to develop mutual trust, friendship, and affinity with someone. So they may say, hey man, how you doing? Sorry about the wait. Hey, are those the new Jordans you're wearing? Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, those are the new ones. They'll ask you all kinds of questions. Hey man, is that a charger you pulled up in? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the new one. <laughs> hey, you think the Lakers are gonna win that game? Yeah, I guess, they're doing pretty good. What do you think about their defense? So they're asking you, all kinds of questions, small talk. They will ask about your clothes. They will ask about where you work at. You like your job? Yeah, what do you do over there? They gather all this information from you. They will ask you about your parents, your mother, your father, your wife, your children, any type of small talk at all that they will use against you later in the same room just a few minutes later. They want to know who you're close to. They want to know who you're close to so that they can start pressing those emotional buttons while they watch your psychological response. They're going to build rapport with you. They want to be your friend. Small talk. It's a trap. Anything they can do to start you talking with the hope that you will continue to talk. The key here is to remain silent. These are silent breaking tactics. The only thing in this situation, you should be asking for is a lawyer and nothing else. When they finish with the small talk, they go into number three. Number three is what I call fear. False evidence appearing real. But in this case, it's really false evidence. You will see them go into an acting routine. They will start having conversations about people who don't exist, witnesses who aren't there, phone calls with no one on the other end. They'll bring files in. They'll bring videotapes and DVDs and CD-ROMs and they'll start a conversation that sounds like this. Hey man, talking to the other police officer. Are these the statements? Yeah, these are the statements, man. This is what the other four guys said. And they're looking at you while they glance through stuff that has nothing to do with you. Wow, so what did she say? Is that all she said? Oh, what, did she wrote a statement? Really? And you got the videotape too? Wow. So now they're looking at you, making you believe that they have some evidence against you. All the files they have on you are empty. It's just a game. Videotapes. As soon as you see the videotape, you think they got some video evidence. There's nothing on the tapes. These are games. There's nothing on the video disc nothing in the files, they haven't talked to anyone, they haven't made any phone calls, and all the information they're gonna get is gonna come from you. You have the right to remain silent and you should use it. Talking about five tactics the police use to break your silence. The number one thing they don't want you to do is to be quiet and ask for a lawyer. In most of these cases, they have no evidence. They're always investigating, but they get evidence from other people. They don't know anything unless you tell them. And when you start giving them evidence, they start piecing things together. And if you're an innocent person, 
you're going to be in trouble because these are professional interrogators and you should never try to match wits with professionals. Five tactics that the police use to break your silence. We are moving now to number four. And number four is the most important because number four is where most of the confessions come from. It's called helpful friends. This is the confession stage. And they're asking you, hey man, talk to me. Tell me what happened. Look, we got statements. And if you've committed a crime and other people are involved in it other than you, they're going to tell you what your buddy said. Hey man, this guy's giving you up. Hey man, the first guy to make a deal is going to win. That He said that it was on you. He said you're the one that started all this stuff. If it has to do with a female, they're really going to go in on you. Hey man, she said you grabbed her. She said you were trying to touch her the whole time. She was trying to get away from you. Listen, just help me out, man. I'm trying to help you. Give me something. So, so, so were y'all dancing at the club and got into it or what happened, man? I mean, talk to me. Tell me what happened. Give me something. Let me help you. The whole time, they're not going to help you. Come on. Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened. Uh, listen, man, this, this, this is important right now. I'm your, I'm trying to help you. Once you leave this room, there's nothing I can do. I'm trying to help you now. You need to help yourself now. Don't fall for it. They're asking you to start giving them evidence. And you should be saying lawyer. You shouldn't be saying anything else. Because as soon as you know something, you put yourself on the scene. What do most people do? Hey, man, uh, it, it really wasn't me. I don't know how he's saying that was me. I, man, I was standing out there, but I didn't do it. I saw them. They the ones did it. But now you put yourself on the scene. You've made yourself a witness. Man, I, I, he gave the gun to me. I was just holding the gun. I didn't use the gun. But now you just put your gun and the gun in your hand and made yourself an accessory. Did you dance with the girl? Were you close to her? Yeah, I mean, we were dancing and stuff. Okay, so now you have hand-to-hand -hand combat or, or contact. You have personal space with this individual. You have physical contact with this individual. And now you're putting yourself in the scene, on the scene, and in personal contact with the accuser. Do you see how this works? And when you refuse, they go back to what you just told them. Hey, man, what do you think your mom would think about this, man? You think she'd want you to be down here not talking to us? We're trying to help you. You want to call your mom? You want to call your dad? You want to call one of your kids, man? I mean, you really need to talk to us. Here's what we're going to do, man. Get, hey, man, get him a phone. Go, somebody get him a phone, man. Let him make a phone call. Call your mama, man. Call your mom. I, I know you're upset. Call your mom. And now you're calling your mom saying, I'm down here at the police station. They're accusing me. And mom's going, what? I don't know what to do. And now you start talking. Because you're emotional, which is what they want you. They're watching you for weakness. And you're falling for it. Hey, man, we know you didn't mean to hurt nobody. This is where they really want you to make the confession. We know you didn't really mean to hurt anybody. Listen, you didn't mean for nobody to get hurt. Come on, man. We know that. Hey, it was just a mistake. Listen, people make mistakes all the time and then they'll start telling you a story about a mistake they made. Hey, man, just yesterday, I, I, I could have gotten in trouble just like you. I could be sitting in that seat lying because they can never sit in that seat you're sitting in. And that's the whole thing with this. Police are allowed to lie and they do. 
They're constantly talking about evidence they don't have, people they haven't talked to, people they don't know. Hey, man, who's the guy that was with you? No, no, not him. The big dude, the big dude. Hoping you just give them information. No, no. Who was the girl you was talking to? I don't know who you're talking about. You don't know the girl, man. The girl that was standing next to you. And then you start rambling off names. Giving them evidence they don't have. All of this is because they're trying to help you. <laughs> they want to be your friends. They want to help you. And, you know, you just made a mistake. It was an accident. It could have happened to anybody. You didn't mean for anybody to get hurt. Man, the gun just went off by itself. I mean, we know it was an accident. Man, just tell us what happened. OK, so 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 you had the gun and then what happened? OK, so you didn't mean for nobody to get hurt. OK, so you and the girl was together and you know, you really wasn't trying to do nothing to her, but, you know, one thing led to another and you you could have just took the whole thing wrong and you could have just misconstrued what you thought she meant. Right. I mean, it was just a mistake. Right. No, it's an admission. And here's the last clincher they're going to run with. Contained in number four, the reason I call it the confession stage because they're going to say, hey, man, just write that down. Just write that down. And they're going to give you a pen and paper. And they're going to say, hey, just write that down. I mean, just, you know, just write down what you just told me. Just write that down. Just write it down. You know, just write that down. Write that down means confession. Never write or sign your name to any statement without a lawyer. Remember, you have the right to remain silent. Use it. It's going to save your life. These people are going to do everything they can to get you to talk. Your job is not to talk. Your job is not to give them information. Your job is not to complete their investigation for them. The thing you must remember here is you're dealing with professionals. These men and women are professionals. They do this for a living. You're not the first rodeo for these people. You don't owe them anything. They're not your friends. Their job is to get a conviction. Their job is to get you to start talking. And you should do that under no circumstance. And again, you should not sign anything. Any statement at all should not have your name on it. When they attach your name to a statement, it's a confession and an admission. And it will not be changed. So moving into number five. And usually no one gets to number five. Why? Because they usually fail at number four. And so they've already made this confession and written this statement. Number five, the fear of loss and threat of violence. Fear of loss and threat of violence for those who are stoic, who keeps their mouth shut, who understands those rights. You have the right to remain silent and for those who silently sit and listen and can take the badgering because that's what's about to happen in number five. Threats of prison. Hey man, you know what they do to guys like you in prison? You don't know what they do to people like you? Man, you ain't got a shot. You ain't got a chance. 
on this, there's accusations. Man, you probably did do it. I'm trying to help you. You sitting here want to hide behind your lawyer. Man, you know how that looked to the court? You sit up trying to hide? You look guilty as hell right now. You know how guilty you look right now? Trying to hide behind a lawyer? You need to be talking to me, man. Okay, what you think will happen to your girl the first night you get arrested? The first night you get carted off to prison? Man, your homeboy gonna have that. I saw your girl. She cute. That, <laughs> let me tell you what's gonna happen. Soon as you get carted off, she's gone. Guys, listen to that. They get all nervous. What you think will happen when you get to prison? You know how many little dudes like you get raped in prison? Man, they're going to give you 25 years for this. I'm trying to talk to you now. I'm trying to talk, save your life now. This is the only opportunity you're going to get. Like a trial don't exist. This is the, all, this is the only opportunity you're going to get. You need to talk to me. I'm the guy that can make the difference for you. Like a judge don't exist. <laughs> like lawyers don't exist. Like juries don't exist. He's the only guy. But that's what they're going to tell you. No, man, I'm going to wait on my lawyer. Good luck with that, man. Good luck with that. Your girl is gone. Your car is gone. Your money is gone. Your kids going to be calling somebody else daddy while somebody else is getting your girl. All of that. I done spent this all this time talking to you, man. You make me want to go upside your head myself. Now there's the threat of violence. Because you won't talk. Because you won't do their job for them. Man, let's quit talking to this dude. Come on, man. Let's let this dude go on and go to jail. Man, if you want to get locked up, that's on you. Today is the first day of the last days of your life, man. Your 20 start today, you stupid idiot. I hope they give you 20, man. I hope they throw the book at you. You so stupid. And they're badgering you trying to get you to give away your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Use it. You have the right to an attorney. And if your attorney is not present, you should not be talking. And if your attorney is present, you should do no talking at all. Understand what the game is. And the game is for them to get a conviction from you based on the evidence that you give them, not the investigation that they're going to do because they're not going to do any investigating. In these type of situations, 85% of the suspects put themselves in prison by giving away their right to remain silent through fear of loss, through threats of violence, Without a lawyer present, they put themselves in prison. Long prison terms are given every day to innocent people because they did not remain silent. I'm Ahmad Blakemore. I appreciate you listening. I am the modern day leper and I will see you on the next one. <laughs> Have a great one. Bye-bye. <laughs>